On this episode of Star Trek Universe, we are reviewing Discovery 413 Coming Home and talking about the new actor playing James Kirk in Strange New Worlds right after these very important words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome to Star Trek Universe, the Star Trek podcast where you get to listen in on the continuing conversation between two lifelong friends who've been watching this stuff for a long, long time. My name is Matthew Carroll. I am David C. Robertson. <laughs> How you doing, bud? <laughs> I'm okay, man. Uh, <laughs> this week has been like, <laughs> I don't know if you saw this. I, I put out a tweet and I was like, me as a DC Comics and Star Trek fan, Hey guys, hey guys, what did Warner Brothers do today to piss us off? And then, <laughs> you know, nope, it's it's Paramount this week. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> and like, I'm not pissed off. I think it's awesome, uh, and I'm very interested. Uh, but yeah, they they released this information. They put out a picture of Paul Wesley from. Um, I just told you about the vampire diaries. Tell me a story. He's a director. He's done a bunch of TV shows, but he, they put out a picture of him in the gold tunic with the enterprise insignia on his shirt in the center seat on a bridge. I assume that means it's the enterprise because of the insignia. Um, and they had, they said that he has been cast as uh, James Kirk for the second season of Strange New Worlds. I suspect they put that out because a lot of people, I saw a lot of people complaining, like, why would they put that out when we haven't even gotten an episode of Strange New Worlds season one? I suspect there were set pictures that were going to come out because right after this dropped, set pictures came out. <laughs> right. And right. in those set pictures, he was standing with uh, the Khan, I think, woman, the, the woman that's named Khan. She's a descendant of, of Khan. Yeah. And uh, he has a different insignia on his, sh on his shirt, so it looks like he's from a different ship. I think, because there are a lot of people worried about um, whether or not he'll interact a lot with Pike, because technically, as, according to canon, he only said he ever met Pike when, the one time when he took over the Enterprise. <laughs> So everyone was right. like, how could he have adventures with Pike? Okay. Um, I think he is on the Enterprise in this picture, and I think it's going to be like maybe a standalone episode where he like has a flashback to some like joint mission with someone from, from Enterprise while he's on another ship or something. But that's what it looks like based on what I'm seeing. But I'm excited. I think it's interesting uh, to to bring in the character, and um, I I don't know. I I just say let's 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 hold off on on our uh, vitriolic rage and yeah. I mean, I don't, yeah. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like if people listen to this show, we're not the two that are constantly uh, full of vitriolic rage. Uh, so we don't even have to worry about what everyone else is saying. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's it's their, their uh, well, pe look, people are going to respond negatively. Whether uh, or not to is, everything, <laughs> is, whether or not it's toxic or not, people are genuinely, you know, concerned about like, well, what are they doing? Like, I, you know, sure. I had three or four people message me as the host of this show and say, what are they doing? I'm hearing that Kirk is going to be a main cast member. You know, and they're not being toxic about it, but they're saying, what are they doing? And I'm saying, you know, we don't know how often he's going to be on the show. We don't know if he's recurring yeah. or anything. He might just be a guest spot. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, it, it could mean that they're getting ready to, like, pass the torch at some point. Uh, that, yeah. That's my that's my initial thought is, like, what if Strange New Worlds Pike Edition is a one season run? <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, I have concern to that. You yeah. know, and, and maybe he does only meet him once, but it's for that passing of the torch. Um, mm -hmm. And then, or, or what if, what if, uh, you know, Strange New Worlds is only about Pike, is only about the Enterprise for one season? You know, what if the, the rest is about Pike's adventures after the Enterprise that eventually lead to him mm. or, you know, his, his um, working with the students and like almost, almost dying or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, th there's all kinds of stuff that it could be. Um, 
Pike. It might introduce this uh, sort of the, the the life of Pike for a season or a half a season on the Enterprise, and then he might move on to something else, and we might continue following his character, or we might continue following the Enterprise. I don't know. We've already got Spock. I'm fine with Kirk joining in. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like, why yeah. not? <laughs> I mean, I don't want them to break canon, but, like, I also... You know, I'm I'm happy to see them experiment. If they're if they're gonna they're doing the prequel thing, just if they're doing it, might as well do it. Um, mm-hmm. I was I was I am I I was excited for a show though. The, the show I have in my head is just the Adventures of Pike, and like yeah, it even though it's a prequel, it can sort of skirt canon the way that Enterprise did. You know, like it can live in the world of Star Trek mm-hmm. without uh like without breaking it. You know. Yeah, they might still be doing that. We don't know. Yeah, we have absolutely. no idea. We know nothing. That's my only point. <laughs> this is probably a good call for, and announcing it before season one is probably a good call because it's while me and you sit here and and a lot of our listeners are going to know who Pike is and all of that. Like the understanding of where this show fits in the canon, I, I don't think a lot of people understood where discovery fit in the canon you know yeah um and that's probably one of the reasons they brought in a young spock you know like for Mm -hmm. the average joe who's not a huge star trek fan go oh spock's on that show now maybe i'll check out star trek you know um Mm -hmm. and this is probably the same thing like hey this show might eventually have kirk get it that's where we are (laughs) that's when we are yeah well you know i think it's i can't remember when it's supposed to be 60 2265 or 61 or i don't know but there is leeway for them to like slowly bring in more and more TOS stuff and for Pike to actually have. I think there it would be like a five year run, if I remember correctly, from what I was reading between where this starts and where Pike would wind up getting burnt or irradiated okay. or whatever. All right. So um I think it would be interesting if we did do like standalone episodes, like on Kirk's enterprise where he's like remembering certain things and certain stories. Sure. But yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want to see a, uh, I don't know, modern, well-produced episode that's set in Kirk's time. I don't know. Kirk's, uh, Kirk's enterprise, you know, like I, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, We've seen it in the movie form where it's mm-hmm. always got to be, uh, it's always got to be an intergalactic threat. It's always got to be, a, mm-hmm. you know, star jumping, whatever. Like, it would be fun to see, like, just an enterprise, like a, a TOS episode. Like, if they just filmed a TOS episode and, like, slotted it into where it mm-hmm. fits in the canon, that'd be super cool, man. Yeah, that'd be uh, fun. Love to see that. Yeah. And I don't know the guy playing him. I, I, my sister says that he fits Kirk. All right. So apparently she knows him and she's like, yeah, he's very Shatner esque. And I'm like, Hmm. I saw an interview with him. He just reminded me of Willem Dafoe, which was weird. <laughs> I was like, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see yeah. how it works. Yeah. I, 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 you mentioned what shows he's been on. I, I, I don't know any of them. So, yeah, I don't watch any of that stuff. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I'm 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 down though. I you know I I I'm just down for more Star Trek. They they're doing a good job. I, I'm really enjoying what's happening uh, with Picard so far. I haven't seen episode three yet, um, mm-hmm. and I'm really uh, enjoyed this episode season of Discovery, which uh, we can get into now. I guess. Yeah, man, let's do it. So season finale, uh, the Ten C. We get to see like what all uh, the Ten C is about, sort of, and. How did I not expect what you said a few episodes ago that uh, you thought that book was going to use his telepathy? And I was like, I've Uh been thinking that, too. How did neither of us go, oh, that light symbol on his head is going to appear on the heads of the squid monsters? Of course, that was so good. Yeah, I mean that <laughs> that worked, but I I was too busy going. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it, it, I I fully expected that, but then this, the that did not expect the light thing, and I was like, I should have expected the light thing. That's so that's so yeah. good. What I was mad that I didn't suspect was that uh, Tarina would use her telepathy at the beginning. Huh. But, you know, I did. I thought this was a really good episode, uh, given how much wrap up this episode was tasked with, because yeah. like, 
the back half of the season was like, good Lord, please do something. Yeah, and then it, it was just, very like, get there, get there, get there. And they could have like used some of that, you know, just throw, throw some things in like a few episodes before so that we can get like some slower character moments. Uh, but this was a very like edge of my seat episode. Mm-hmm. And like, I am usually willing to or able to compartmentalize and like get wrapped up in the music and the emotions despite feeling like there are no stakes, mm-hmm. which I kind of felt like there were no stakes because this discovery. Hmm. Like when she's reacting to book dying, I'm like, no, the Tennessee are going to save him. Yeah, I knew I knew that. Earth's not going to die. Earth will be fine. <laughs> I thought Earth was probably going to be fine. Mm-hmm. I, I will say I did really enjoy, even though I knew it was probably going to, they were probably going to survive, especially since they're like right on the raggedy edge. Like, let's save it or not. You know, surely they're going to win that battle. Mm-hmm. But there were a number of things that like could have, could have gone a different way this episode that I thought, yeah. I could see, um, like, the fact that Tilly and Vance are hanging out. Like, I thought there could be a possibility of them dying for Earth right right before it, you know, right before it's saved. Um, I, and I really liked, uh, as much as I, I've talked about how the season, I was like, I was en- it was enough for me that, like, the DMA is destroying Federation space that mm-hmm. I don't really need it to be, like, at the edge of destroying Earth. Right. But... I really enjoyed the Tilly and Vance stuff. And that gave, it did give a lot of weight to the final episode. So I kind of take all that back. Like I, I, as much as I didn't need that for the stakes, Mm -hmm. it was very smart of them to give us an episode or give us the, the view of from earth, you know, from the, the fleet trying to save it and getting to see Tilly and Vance and drinking their whiskey. (laughs) I loved, I loved the line. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> T- Tarka gave me uh, Tarka gave me this whiskey before or whatever and he's like that Tarka what a sweet guy <laughs> yeah yeah I dug I dug that I like I liked everything with uh with Vance and uh Tilly um I like I said I was I was wrapped up in it I was wrapped up in the music I was wrapped up in the emotions the the whole vibe of the scene um it felt like a really big deal but I never believed that they were gonna die not ever. Right. Not right. ever. Um, I, I kept thinking with the with the book death, I wanted to believe. I really wanted to believe because I knew it wasn't going to happen. And I really wanted to be surprised <laughs> in that final yeah. final moment. <laughs> but what, yeah. what, the thing that made me know as soon as as soon as this pattern buffer disappears, they say we have another orb on the way. And I, I kept uh-huh. trying to think like, how how could they have made that believable? Like, how could it have worked? Um, freaking kill him. Just yeah. Be done with it. Kill him. No, I see. I love, I love the reunion at the end and I love, um, yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's really, really impactful. And yeah, like, I wanted, fine. I wanted that reunion and I love him getting to talk to them and him talking about how anger fueled this mission and like mm-hmm. how, how we have to let that go and how we have to break, take down the walls. Like it's all so, so good. That was all really good. Classic Star Trek stuff. I just really, really loved it. But yeah, I wanted to believe. I, I wish that. I think maybe even if they didn't show the pattern buffer, like appear, because it also when it disappears, it disappears in a like a, a deal of blue light that we've never mm-hmm. seen before. You know what I mean? Like maybe if they hadn't done that effect, like maybe if they like we're trying to catch this pattern buffer now, we're trying to catch it, and the ship just blew up. Maybe I would have believed it more mm. um because because I mean, yeah, him, him but it was very it was also very evocative him appearing for a second on the bridge and then disappearing was yeah uh very emotional for burnham i felt like the i had thought the transporter gleam was exactly the same as all the other tr- transformer uh transporter oh, really? gleams on the show but yeah i don't know it's just this it was so full it's so full of red herrings you know like earlier this season they said oh we're gonna go on a three-hour tour and you're like ah shit gelligan's island that's foreshadowing and then this episode they're like yeah we're gonna burn out the spore drive which will leave Mm -hmm. us stranded and take decades and you're like okay so yeah that's maybe they're gonna do that 
But then, like, I was thinking, like, this the fact that they mentioned it again makes me think they're not going to do that. <laughs> if they had just left it at three-hour tour, I would have been like, hmm. Mm-hmm. But the fact they're bringing it up again, not so much. Yeah, I, I bought that. I, I really did. I liked, I liked that they didn't do a big deal about it, where, like, Burnham's like, crew, I, I, I know you're, I forget. I think there's, like, a moment in the Voyager where, like, Janeway like talks to the crew about the decision and stuff to like mm-hmm. strand them on that side of the wormhole. Yeah. And they all have to go like, yes, we'll do it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that Burnham's just like, nah, I'm captain. Uh, like we, we have to do this. We have to save the, we, you know, we have to do the right Federation thing. Here's what bugs me though, is that the spore drive at all worked given that they said they couldn't use it a few episodes ago because this mycelial network petered out just outside of the barrier. Well, they, they couldn't travel on the mycelial network. They just they still use the spore drive, which in of itself is using the mycel- traveling along the mycelial network to get outside of the bubble. No, 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 they didn't. Or were they just were they just like making they just a hole used it with to it? generate energy, as they said. Okay, they used it. It was like okay. a, they said the only thing on the ship that created enough energy to do what book did or what uh, Tarka did. Gotcha. On a larger scale was the spore drive. And like they basically just used it as a power generation system that like shorted out the bubble they were in. Okay. That makes me feel better. Because I was like, wait a minute. Help. <laughs> That's what he says. He's like, normally <laughs> it propels us along the mycelial network. Mm-hmm. But if we do it and stay in place, it'll cause this. So let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. What what did I miss? Because when did the dimension that Oros was supposedly going to become like the Star Trek universe version of Plato's ideal plane? It's like the Nexus now. I thought it was just a place Oros disappeared to that was supposed to be a utopia. But now, like, for the first time, it seems like Tarka's like, oh, Quajon's going to be there and everybody you lost is going to be there. Well, no, I think I think it's just another universe that Oros traveled to. So I yeah. think he's he's just assuming that uh, other parts of the universe will be there. Yeah, it's like a parallel universe where everything mm-hmm. didn't go to shit. Like I think right. that's what the idea is. Yeah, but he was just talking with such certainty. Like, are you that deluded? Um, but then you know, I'm like, is it is it the Nexus? Could it have been the Nexus? Like that would be <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> is the Nexus linked to this place, this perfect universe? Yeah, I think it's just. Uh, I think it's just that they were trying to go. Uh, he's trying to go to this parallel universe that's supposed uh-huh. to where, where things are better. And and I don't even know that the parallel universe is real. We talked about it last week. Tarka showing up there and yeah. being like. It just being a wasteland. It could be. We don't know if Oros's idea of this other plane was real. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, it, 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 it all seems like prisoner logic. And, th- and that's the thing is like book says at the end of this, he's like, I just kind of wish they'd had this conversation earlier in the season. Cause it does feel like mm-hmm. it, it feels like a, how it should have ended thing. Like, mm-hmm. or he tells him the story of him and Oros in prison together. And he goes, you know, that probably just means he died in prison, right? Like, that's probably what happened. You, you, he's not there because they killed him. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, and, and and it just never cut. And they never have that conversation until like literally two minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. Could have had that conversation at any point. If Book thought that as soon as he was like imprisoning him or something, they could have had yeah. that conversation. And then, like, after, like, he has been completely stubborn and single-minded this entire time, and, like, with, like, a two-minute speech, he's like, you're right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I yep. was just like, that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Tarko was pretty single-minded, and that one conversation wouldn't have done it. Something needed to happen. Something needed to, like, you know, make him change his mind. And also... Why did he need to change his mind? Like, yeah, in the end, it's Indoye who disrupts their plan. I think they were like looking for some kind of redemption for Tarka because they yeah. made us feel bad for him earlier. Exactly. And I just they wanted to I never feel bad for him. <laughs> yeah. They wanted it to be like a beautiful ending where they like cra- He crashes and you kind of hope he made it to his, uh, you know, his, his pleasure planet or whatever. <laughs> pleasure planet <laughs> what was it in the original series where uh they they talked about ripley's pleasure planet or something yep, they do <laughs> ripley's pleasure planet 
<laughs> it's like the early Risa. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but somehow more like it feels like more of a carnival type of planet, well, doesn't it? Like yeah, it feels sure. more gross. Especially, I don't know if Ripley's Believe It or Not was a thing back then. Yeah. But, you know, everywhere you go where there's like a tourist trap has those Ripley's Believe It or Nots. And uh-huh. now, that, now that that's a thing in our world, I just imagine Ripley's Pleasure Planet is like a continuation of that franchise out into the Federation uh-huh. space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just sounds gross, though. It sounds like, <laughs> I don't know, like Barnum Circus or something. Exa- like Ripley's yeah. Pleasure Planet. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Um, come on down. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis on the word come. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Have a donut and vagina. Both at the same time. <laughs> Don't get the two confused. Or do. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's kosher down on Ripley's pleasure planet. Come let a Klingon shit on your chest. Oh, gosh. Only five quat loose. <laughs> gotta move on. Gotta, gotta get out of this spiral. <laughs> I was talking about the the, the the three of them that sort of like bet- the betrayers, right? And Doye, Book, mm-hmm. and Tarka. Like, they all three have a turn where they start, like, working towards the same ends as Discovery, uh, even Tarka. And I'm not sure that any of them make sense. Like, <laughs> and Doye realizes uh-huh. she was wrong because Book was a hostage but he wasn't a hostage uh-huh. when they spoke and there's nothing they don't even tell her that like they don't even say in that conversation where they put her in the brig or whatever or confined her to her quarters they don't even tell her that like what he's gonna do is gonna just still destroy earth it'll just take longer which is the whole thing like they're like this yeah. doesn't make sense like yes people will evacuate they're still gonna destroy earth and it's risking this mission you know um, mm-hmm. And it won't stop the DMA long term, you know, all this stuff. Like, right. well, I guess it would stop the DMA long term because it'll kill the 10 C. But, it, you know, it's like we're the Federation. We're not going to genocide the species. Like, I don't know. I, I just felt like her her turn didn't make a lot of sense. And then Tarka's turn didn't make a lot of sense. I feel like Book's turn, a last episode or whatever, made sense. Um, but yeah, but it, neither of their turns in Doye or Tarka. I bought in Doye's more than Tarka's for sure. But Tarka, at that point, is so single-minded, uh, I just can't imagine that he would uh, turn at the last second like that. And it would have just been more effective if he's just, like, riding into that thing fully ready to do what he has to do. And he could still grab his transporter and be like, as Book's transporting away, he's like, transport away with me. Come on, Tarka. And he's like, no, I'm staying. There's a possibility the energy will still will still create be created and da- He's yeah. like, no, you're you're delusional, Tarka. It's not happening, and and then he he dies with that little bit of hope. You know, that, this still could happen without him having to turn at the last second. Right. I, yeah. I I was fine with Endoya's uh, turn. I actually liked that because I felt I walked out of last episode feeling like she was a coward, and right. here I feel like you know they're putting the crew under lockdown and everything. We're gonna figure out how this happened. And she's just like, no, you know what? Straight talk. I did the shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here was my I reasoning. Love that. I love and that, too. I also, I, I say all that, that I didn't buy her turn. I didn't. But, like, I bought it more than Tarka's again. The thing I really mm-hmm. didn't buy, though, is they'd trust her. Cause her. Because her turn really didn't have any logic to it, then for them to trust her with the kamikaze mission, I was mm-hmm. like... Why? Why? Like, I don't know that you want to risk the universe and Earth and the 10 C on this person who just betrayed you. Like, I kind of thought, like, yeah. sorry, I kind of wanted to like, sorry, you don't get the hero's death. Even if you're re- being real with us right now, we can't trust you. Detmer yeah. has to go to her death right now. And like that would have that shame of like, you've lost the trust to be the hero in this moment. Like, mm-hmm. you, thank you for the idea, but you're going back to the brig. Like, we can't trust you to be the person behind the stick on this one. And like, yeah, I, I, I think that would, I think that would have been more effective. And like, 
Um, I just felt like her, I, I understand the idea of her getting the last hero's death as she's like, you know, wait, did they get, yeah. no, they got her out at the end. Yeah. They got her out of the end. They she, got her out at the end. And now, and she was rewarded by, you know, getting to meet the president of the earth and yes. Yeah. Which, well, she probably knew the president of the earth. She was like the general of the yeah. earth, but like, uh, which Stacey Abrams, Hey, yeah. Georgia Senate minority leader running yeah. for governor. Yeah. 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 That was cool. I didn't recognize her at first too. Like they act, they they totally sh- <laughs> they totally shot it. Like I was supposed to know who it was. I'm like, oh, who's it gonna be? Like the way they're shooting it, right? And then like the doors open, and I was like, it's just a lady. <laughs> Wait, I do know her. Oh, yes. <laughs> like it took me a minute because I was like, was it gonna be like Sarek's head in a jar? Like what did they do? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's silly as fuck. <laughs> but no, I, I, I knew Stacey Abrams, and I really am. I, I'm a big fan of Stacey Abrams. I think she's a freaking mm-hmm. badass. Um, and I'm, and I thought it was really cool that uh, it, it also was very like on the nose. Stacey Abrams for president? Anyone? Eh? <laughs> like that's been that's been a very. Uh, big uh you know talking point on you know on the on the left side of things like stacy abrams yeah stacy abrams for president for sure she'd be awesome um and like yeah so her being the president of the federation was cool and a big star trek fan apparently i remember hearing yeah. that and you told me that before we started so that's super cool love it yeah man so that was neat and i'm always happy whenever a star trek fan uh gets to be uh, involved, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's always neat. Yeah. And the thing is when they showed her, they showed her walk out and the first shot they showed her, she didn't have any lines and it kind of like showed her from the side and like showed her from the front and then showed her from the side. And I was like, Oh, that's going to be a nice little like nod to Stacey Abrams gets to be like the physical representation of the future president. That's cute. And then it was going to move on, but they had gave her a whole scene with Michael. Like they'd finished yeah. the season on like, not, not the last, not the last shot, but like, yeah, uh, they finished the season letting, or was it, was that the, that was the last scene pretty much. Right. I'm, I'm yeah, trying to remember the, if the book yeah. thing happened, booking happened before, right? The book scene was that before or after that? I can't I, remember, I'm, man. I'm, I'm jumbling it in my head. Uh, anyway, one of the last scenes of this episode, the season was them ha- having a conversation uh, about what where goes the future of the federation now Mm -hmm. and like she got a whole bunch of lines i was like man good job stacy abrams i was like this is cool stunt casting but stacy abrams put in the work and like acted i like she did a good job for real she's acting as a politician which she is she was probably just like acting as herself kind of but like it worked it really worked yeah I mean, Lisa Bonet has done that for years, made a whole career out of just acting like herself. <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen Lisa Bonet act like anyone but Lisa Bonet. It's just fine. <laughs> I like Lisa Bonet. <laughs> but. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yes, I said almost the exact same thing. We did a uh, review of the Batman for MCU cast this week. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that was my exact thing. Uh, that You just it's almost said my exact sentence. I was like. Like. It wasn't so revolutionary as a Batman movie. It was a Batman movie. Don't get me wrong. I really like a Batman movie. <laughs> like it didn't yeah. need to be revolutionary, but it was a Batman movie. <laughs> but it just same like, yeah, it's a Batman movie as it should be <laughs> a Batman yeah. movie. Yeah, I, I, with that, I wound up going, hey, that's not like as groundbreaking as I thought it would be. It was all right. It was pretty good. Yeah, but like the more I've thought about like Bruce's arc and and just. I've warmed up to it quite a bit. It has jumped a few on my ranking. Okay. For, for sure. So I would, I would love to hear uh, more about that. Uh, yeah, maybe I don't want to spoil. I don't want to spoil it right here in the middle of this review. <laughs> yeah, if, no. Anything else about uh, Discovery? And we could throw a little. I'd love to hear more about what you're thinking about Bruce's arc, though. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Did you like where they left Book? Um, I was fine with it. Honestly, like. This works really well as a series finale <laughs> sure yeah 100 percent. it really did it worked really well as a series finale and it was one of those things where like yes i want all the things i want more star trek but i'm, I'm kind of sad that's not the series finale it, it does work really well as like it, really it, i completely well. agree with you yeah I mean, I mean i'm not saying at all <laughs> that i'm like yeah, I don't. Uh, I, no, I'm not mad. I'm getting more discovery. discovery, but I, I, I do. Right. 
<laughs> think it's a really, really good ending to this story. Um, everybody found a good place. Everybody found family. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like Saru ends up uh, with Tarina with his Vulcan lady. Yeah. No, it really, it really did. It ended, everyone's in a happy, good place. I mean, it, with the exception of book needing to go uh, to, I guess, be conscripted by Starfleet as his prison sentence. Oh, I mean, his pros- he's got community service. That's yeah. what he's got. Yeah, but I mean, like, <laughs> I, I did, I did, have, you know, we, we where was, because Burnham was on her way in the very third episode after after the Battle of the Binary Stars. Mm-hmm. Burnham was, like, on her way to some sort of work detail, right? Like, yeah. that was the, I mean, and this was a thousand years before. Well, uh, <laughs> She was, she was, I don't remember. God, it's been so long. Yeah, they were like on a shuttle. And I don't know if you remember that. Episode. She was on a shuttle and they were, yeah, they were, and they were wearing like prison uniforms. Some sort of prison like duty or something. I remember them talking about that. Um, it may have just been like a labor camp type thing, uh, but yeah, it, it, it does seem like that's at least across these thousand years. That's something the Federation does is, is puts people to work when they've done something horrible. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, they, they did say the president did say that his reasons would be considered because they, you know, that's fair. Yeah. And so it didn't, he was not going to prison. Like, yeah, he was very pleased. He was not going to prison. He was just going to go help worlds that were affected by the DMA. The only thing that would have made this a season finale for me would have been series. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Series. Uh, nope. The only thing that would have made it a season finale, I don't count it. I'm waiting on next week's. Uh, <laughs> the only thing that would have made this a series finale for me is if they'd connected it back to her decision at the binary stars mm-hmm. and let her like, 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 like make her have that moment of empathy for him that like, he's like, I know you could never understand why I did what I did. And, he's, and she's like, you don't think I could understand? Like I've yeah. told you about my past. I started a war because I did it, you know, like I definitely have been where you are. I'm mm-hmm. not there anymore. Like I've grown past that kind of like rash decision making. And I, I trust the people around me and all this, like let her, let her make those, mo- have that moment of like pointing out, like you are the person I was four years ago. And yeah. like I, I could have seen a really, there could have been a really strong scene there. And I'm so amazing. I can only be in love with myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the show, but I'm awesome. <laughs> I do everything really well. Yeah, that's um. true. It's true. Um, yeah, I loved it. I loved them slipping into a couple speak at the end and just like mm-hmm. having that five minutes was really nice and him disappearing. Oh, it was rough. Kind of heartbreaking. Yeah, it was real heartbreaking. Yeah. I love that she he, she didn't pronounce that right, and he was like, "Nope." She's like, "Yep, I said it right the first time." <laughs> yeah, it's great. It was exactly it was exactly Burnham's character, um, and and I loved the story about them. Uh, it's just it's such a great moment for them. Um, we, they're talking about the the moment he fell in love with her, and she says, um, I, "I'm not shivering. I'm moving to warm my body up." He's like, "That's what shivering is." <laughs> 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 like that is just so. Perfectly both of them yeah. and perfectly like a believable scene of like love, like love beginning. You know, I really, mm-hmm. really found that uh, just perfect. Really, really yeah. good, good, good moment. I did like the, you know, as, as schlocky as it is sometimes, I mm-hmm. I did really enjoy the, uh, the coupling of, hey, Tennessee. You've got to bring down your barriers to to live, uh, to truly live, and to not harm and all this shit. Mm-hmm. And then this is the same thing with Saru talking to Tarina, and like you've got to bring down, move, bring down your barriers so that each day can be a little brighter. Yeah, well, and and you're talking about schlocky and on the nose. Like I also think it was uh, a direct political statement uh, about now and today and where mm-hmm. we are as a country. Um, uh, and, and a world um, really with the, the bring like literally like you got to bring down your wall like and and then at the yeah. end it literally being Stacey Abrams stepping out of a <laughs> shuttle being like okay we've yeah. gotten this far but we've got a lot of work to do like we're we're, we're starting to bring the federation together again mm-hmm. which is literally like the world right now like trying to uh, 
bring us back into the global community and like um there's a, there's there's definitely like a lot going on there where it's like okay we've gotten past this horrible thing that is donald trump mm-hmm. <laughs> but and, and we brought the wall down like and where do we go from here uh uh, you know, it worked for me. I didn't. I didn't think it was too on the nose. The Stacey Abrams of it all may be a little too on the nose, but I like yeah. her a lot, and I'm down for it. <laughs> if like it was Stacey Abrams, and then like her husband came out and it was Barack Obama, then I'd be like, okay, <laughs> too much. It's just a little too far, guys. <laughs> that said, Obama is a Star Trek fan, so also our adoptive grandfather's here, and Biden comes strolling out. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> finger guns everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to listen to him but he's a symbol of hope for now <laughs> he's not like our first choice <laughs> here's a little here's our grandpa here's our past pit grandpa president who we we used him to get through a rough patch but she's president now <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what a rough patch it is. <laughs> um okay, real quick, since we yeah. any any other discovery talk, anything else to say about sure. this, this episode? I do have something else to say. Please. Did you notice that <laughs> they mentioned like, oh yeah, Bryce is gonna meet us down there if uh Kovic will let him. I'm like, yeah, you're totally gonna spin off, you bastards. Something's happening. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it is weird that it does seem like they're setting up five spinoffs from this show. Uh mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm down. Uh but it's also the least popular Star Trek series. Um so it's like I mean and you know, I think of the even of the ones that are out right now, I think the others seem to be getting a better reception. I think part of that is just this one was first. So it's like the new era and like trying to push the new, like trying to be new, trying to do something different. And it's, uh, it's tough mm-hmm. to get that done. Um, but anyway, well, I mean, I don't know that it's the least popular. I really have no idea, uh, what the ratings look like because they're not, I haven't seen them release sure. those numbers. It just keeps getting renewed. Yeah. Um, well, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think the numbers are bad. I don't know anything about that. I'm just talking about the reception online and like the reception of people I know. And there was rece- like, there's tons of people who started discovery. I, every time I talk to people, they're like, Oh, is that still on? Like, and, but they're all like, Oh, card season two. Yeah. That's, that's coming out soon. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, and then, and then I've even, I even hear pretty much nothing but positive about lower decks and prodigy. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, um, <laughs> those are just fantastic. I mean, are, look, yeah. Uh, Prodigy is my favorite of all of them right now. Right. Now, as an old school Star Trek fan and a new school Star Trek fan, I like Prodigy the most and Discovery the least of all of those. Mm. But I still see a lot of like really positive stuff about Discovery from, Same, yeah. you know, on online. So it's, it's just hard to tell. Like, I feel like Picard gets more shit than anything. Interesting. From where I'm seeing. Uh, weirdly, when Discovery is working... I think I might like it the best. And when it's not yeah. working, I like it the least. Like yeah. some of the best, like this episode, some of the best Star Trek I've seen. Like, it's yeah. great. I love it. Um, but so other episodes, I'm like, just get to the next thing. I see what you're doing. I think the writing is a little transparent. And so yeah. like. They are just, not subtle on Discovery. Yeah. So, so, so I just like see what's coming from a mile away. I mean, ever since. Uh, uh, like some of the particulars have changed and are different, but like ever since, you know, uh, 10 episodes ago or whatever it was when they first showed, said that the DMA had relocated to earth and Vulcan, I was like, all right, so we're going to go out to the edge of the barrier and like have the final episode be this. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, let's wait. Now let's wait five episodes, six episodes to do that. And, and you know, I, so so I I just I get I get restless during discovery because yeah. I kind of just see where it's going. Okay, um, let's get there. Which season five is ten episodes. They cut it down three. Good. I think I think good. when season six comes around and they've cut it down to eight, we'll be in a really good place. <laughs> That's about how many good ones there are a season. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yep. What's that line from Futurama? 66 uh, episodes, about no. 20 good ones. Uh, that's the joke, but yeah, 79 episodes, about 30 good ones. Yeah. 
if yeah. I'm talking about TOS. That's Futurama, right? Yep, that's the episode where no fan has gone before. It's my favorite episode of probably anything ever. <laughs> All right, well, uh, can we move on? Are you finished with Discovery? Uh, yeah, I think so. So, uh, the Batman spoiler. Spoiler alert. Uh-huh. Uh, what's your advancement on the arc of Bruce? Um, I really like... Like, do you do you remember how um, he was very forceful with Selena? There were a couple of really uncomfortable moments where he's like very judgmental of her lifestyle and the things that she has done. Um, and he wants to know what her relationship is to Falcone. Right, and you get this sure. idea, like almost like a jealousy type of thing, but it's also like they just did a really good job with like. At the beginning, Bruce is very black and white. He sees things in a very specific, like either you're bad or you're good right. kind of way. Um, and then like with the revelation of what his dad did and his dad's ties to Falcone, even if they were for good reasons, he still operated in shades of gray to achieve a greater goal. Mm-hmm. And then to also like be dealing with Selena and knowing that just because she's a thief and just because she may have had some sort of like, there's always this, like it was Bruce's own discovery of having to embrace in some places, the light in some places, the dark, like, and then his like arc at the end of being like, I have to come, you know, and offer hope as well. Like I really loved that. Like when he was trying to save people, like they weren't, they were too scared of him to take his help. Yeah. I loved that, that notion. It, it, it brought me back to some really good Darwin cook comics, um, where, um, <laughs> Superman pops up and he's like, Oh, you changed your costume. And what's with the kid? Like, cause Bruce is suddenly like moved on from golden age, Batman to silver age, Batman. He's got Robin. He's like, what'd you do? And he was like, I'm trying to scare criminals, not children. <laughs> um, I really liked that. I, I really thought it was, it was a neat turn. And uh, I liked, the more I thought about it, the more I liked the fact that uh, part of that was because the Riddler told him, or he, we kept thinking that he was going to, he knew that Bruce was Batman, but then he was like, we almost got him. We almost got Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And, and then Batman's like, shit, the way I, the way I, you know, show yeah. myself off, the way I do things makes these bad guys think they're in league with me. No, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, no, I, I, I think that's, that's definitely in there. I liked all, I liked all of that quite a lot. Mm-hmm. And, um, there, there were other things like he, you know, he was so mad at Alfred, you know, it's all the same thing. Like, dude, you lied to me. And he's like, you know, your, your, your dad was a good man. He did what he had to do for this reason. Right. Um, it's also that they also left it mur- murky enough though, with the dad mm-hmm. stuff that I didn't really get the sense that the dad had done something. He did like basically the, the dad's only real. He just wanted Falcon to scare him. Right. And then- yeah. So, so, so that is, that is bad, but it's not as bad. It's not nearly as bad as what, like, that Falcone or like right. everyone else is accusing his dad of, or who was it? The right. penguin that was accusing his dad of that? Um, Riddler. 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 Okay. Riddler. Yeah. Riddler. yeah th- th- there's, there's some points I really don't like. Um, and for, for, for one thing, I think the Riddler, what I wanted from the movie, I, I've realized this more and more as I've like thought about it. Mm-hmm. I wanted black Panther. Uh-huh. I wanted, I wanted the Riddler to win the moral argument, but have used the wrong tactics. I think he did. Except when he tried to drown the city. Which yeah, is that why, was the, yeah, that was weird. Huge leap. He's this guy who's after corruption. I'm going to stop mm-hmm. the corruption in the city. And here's what I would, here's the rewrite that I have for this movie. <laughs> Cause they're listening to me is if Mm -hmm. instead of being mad at Bruce Wayne because of the sins of the father and just Mm -hmm. because even that's a leap, like Bruce Wayne is also an orphan. 
like be mad at Bruce Wayne because he never stepped up as Bruce Wayne right. and stopped the corruption of his yes. dad's own fund. Like if that could have happened in that movie, I would have just been because I just wanted it to end. And I've said this on four podcasts at this point, probably, but uh, I really wanted it to. <laughs> so, so if you, if you guys follow Stranded Panda, you might have heard me say this. Yeah. I really wanted it to end after Falcone's death and just mm-hmm. end on the scene in the, in the room where he realizes Batman realizes that this guy hate doesn't hate Batman. He loves Batman because he, he yeah. wanted to bring down Bruce Wayne and he wants to bring down Bruce Wayne for a good reason because Bruce mm-hmm. Wayne had the power to step up and stop the corruption. And Bruce Wayne never did that. And then he realizes he's got to be more than just Batman. Yeah. And then I want the last scene to be him like putting on the mask that is Bruce Wayne. For the first that would have been really that would have been dope. That's that what been, I wanted. But I think in some ways, like we're building towards that still. Like I totally agree. But yeah, totally agree. I, I do. I do understand and agree with that to some degree. Yeah. The whole last hour of the movie feels like they needed the Riddler stakes to go up. This is a problem. Mm-hmm. You know, as we talk about it with Discovery all the time. They needed Earth to be in trouble, and so instead of it being enough that Batman has personal stakes to like feel bad that he inspired the Riddler and that be enough for the end of the movie. It Mm -hmm. has to go to like Batman has to stop 15 guys dressed as the Riddler while they're trying to shoot all the politicians and the, and the whole city for some reason he wanted to stop corruption and now he wants to kill the whole city. That's just does not, it's not the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are some weird leaps in there, I think, but um, overall I've, I, I like it a lot more than I initially did. For sure. And if you want to hear me talk about it ad nauseum with actual notes where I actually wrote down my thoughts, dconscreen.com. Um, yeah, yeah. Please, you guys, go check out DC on screen. Um, that's, they actually know way more about the DC stuff than, uh, <laughs> than I ever do. Have you and Jason gotten to do your full episode yet? Of our, of the review? Yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. good, good. Sweet. Yeah. It was, uh, we did a whole thing. I'm going to go listen to it for sure. Yeah, that's that's a good call. Instead of you just ha- being like, "Hey, Dave, what are your thoughts on this?" I'm like, "Just go listen to my show and and get me a couple of clicks, man." <laughs> well, I, d- I do, I do. I basically listen to your show whenever I you talk about something that I'm caught up on, mm-hmm. which is rare these days. But whenever there's a movie, I always right. come check it out. Right. Just curious because you said you you said you'd been evolving. I just curious where your thought process was. Yeah, I usually pop out of a movie and go, "Okay, that was terrible," and I never change my mind. Right. Or I come out of a movie and I feel like I don't like it. And then like I warm up to it substantially or I love it and then sour on it quickly. (laughs) I have seen you many times really dislike a movie and then hear that it was better than you think. And then go back years later and be like, that was a great movie. I was just a bad mood or something like you just it didn't resonate with you the first time. But on the second yeah. viewing, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have done that enough to be able to recognize when that's happening, though. Right. Yeah. Same. Um, and it's like I said, in my my first thoughts on DC on screen, I was like, look, man, I was in a theater. It was late at night. I was half asleep. Uh, <laughs> I was not feeling great about being there. My anxiety was like super high. Right. So that might be affecting it. I'm I'm going to think about it for a couple of days and really get into this later. Self-aware enough to know now where I'm like, you know, like if me and you went to a movie, if you were like, hey, man, let's go to a movie. And then I go and then like you used to do 15 people were there that I didn't know about. I'm going to mm. be pissed and I'm not going to like that movie for three years at least. <laughs> uh, you know, that, that old, um, you know, that old <laughs> adage, know thyself. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to hear that and I used to think like know thyself like know who you are know your essence and the older i get that phrase just means like know know how to enjoy a movie know how (laughs) yeah that's my my motivations in life have gotten much smaller no um just know your faults yeah 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 accept them and love yourself while still knowing that like yeah this is a big, this is a blind spot for me. Like I know that I can, I know that I can change my mind. I know that I can be wrong about something. Like I, I, I find that all the time. I think that, that that's like really, really, it's rad. It's rad that you, uh, know, know that, know the, your experience of a movie can change and grow. And mm-hmm. I tend to get a little locked in still, uh, 
in a lot of on a lot of movies. But I don't know. I, I, it's sometimes I'm often on a rewatch. I will. Uh, I, I I will feel diff- a little differently. Um, yeah. But uh. But yeah, that's that's rad. All right. Well, I just we just wanted to hear you hear you talk about it. We're yeah, we're gonna man. go uh, watch Picard and talk about that too. And we'll uh, drop right, that in cool. the feed in a couple of days, guys. If you're uh, enjoying the show, uh, please you know throw us a review on iTunes or whatever if you've enjoyed yeah, this cover uh, coverage covery in this coverage of discovery <laughs> this is star trek cover 413 <laughs> apostrophic cover we've been working hard to get these out and uh we would really appreciate it uh, if you throw us a five-star review on itunes uh helps people find the show really helps is us it out. still itunes or is it apple podcast i thought apple itunes podcast, went away it did i don't know whatever it's called wherever you're listening i'm so Honestly, confused wherever you're listening to this drop us a like or a thumbs up or a five star or a um whatever whatever's there sorry I, was, it. That, I wasn't trying to call you out or anything i was like no you're dude, right okay look we as podcasters get stuck in our grooves and like i hear other podcasters go yeah leave us a thing on itunes and i'm like i have been told over and over again that itunes is no longer a thing <laughs> is it a thing or isn't it i'm so confused it is not although i think it still works like if you have itunes wow. on an old computer it's still connected so um okay whatever whatever uh I, I don't know when that may stop being supported at some point but but yeah if you're on a mac apple whatever, podcast apple podcast is where we are uh all right mm-hmm. uh thanks guys joel on true live long and prosper what was the thing i said it right <laughs> this best i've got <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. 